All right, so now we're ready to talk about long-run equilibrium. Now, as we go into this subject of long-run equilibrium, I want to review quickly uh, what we learned about the aggregate market and the curves that are in the aggregate market. Okay, so we created one particular aggregate market where we have real GDP on the horizontal axis. We have price level on the vertical axis and we have a, the short run aggregate supply curve as an upward sloping curve, a relationship between quantity and price because uh, it's a supply curve. And then we have the aggregate demand curve downward sloping because, because demand, uh, demand is higher when price is, sorry, demand is, quantity is higher when price is lower and uh, quantity is lower when price is higher, okay? And so we learned that where these two curves intersect, just like a product market uh, graph, where they intersect, we have equilibrium in the aggregate market, and that that determines the price level, the equilibrium price level in the economy, which we call the actual CPI, okay, that's the inflation rate, uh, and the quantity that is actually produced. So the actual amount of output produced in the entire economy, which we call real GDP. And so actual output, real GDP, uh, is determined by the intersection of short-run aggregate supply and aggregate demand. But then we also uh, identified a third curve that is on this, uh, on the, in the aggregate market. And so we have real GDP and we have price level here. And what we identified is this third curve, which we call long run aggregate supply. And what we learned is that the long run aggregate supply curve is a vertical line. It's a vertical curve, so to speak. And the reason that it is vertical is because it is unrelated to price. Uh, if we have a change in the price level, if the price level goes up, the quantity is the same. If the price level goes down, the quantity is the same. And the reason the quantity is the same no matter what is because long run aggregate supply is based on what we are capable of producing. Given our current labor, given our current capital, given our current natural resources, our land in the economy, that what we can possibly produce in output in the economy, it's not going to change just because prices go up or prices go down. Because long run aggregate supply is not affected by the motivation of producers. It's only affected by changes in our productive capacity. And that's based on stock of factors and the productivity of those factors. If, our, uh, if, our, if we get more factors of production, then we can produce more. If our factors of production become better in quality, then we can produce more. And when that happens, the long run aggregate supply curve will just simply move as a vertical line to the right. It'll just keep moving here. Now, if we lose factors of production or if productivity goes down, then the long run aggregate supply curve can move to the left. But generally speaking, in this principles class, we generally assume that the long run aggregate supply curve is stable. It's not moving, it's staying right there. Although we are going to look at the idea of it moving in this lesson, all right? Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we are going to put, all th or put both of these curves together, okay? We're going to take this curve or this these two curves and we're going to set it on this aggregate market graph because technically they both have the same axes, so all three of these curves are coexisting together on the same uh on the same uh coordinate plane, okay? When we put all three of them together on one set of graphs, there are three possibilities that we can come up with, and this is what they look like. The first possibility is going to look like this. 
I'm going to draw it over here. I'm going to draw two of them over here on the side and one larger one over here. The two on the side here, I'm, we're, we're actually not talking about them today. We're going to talk about them in the next lesson. Okay, so one possibility is that we have price level, real GDP, price level, real GDP, Okay, and so I'm going to draw the long-run aggregate supply curve on both of these. So there is the long-run aggregate supply curve. Here we go. The long-run aggregate supply curve. You should be drawing these with me. And one possibility is that we have the short-run aggregate supply curve here, and we have the aggregate demand curve here. Okay. And notice where the intersection is the, of the aggregate market. The intersection is right here. And so that is our CPI and our real GDP. And here's what's happening here. One possibility, when we put these two together, one possibility is that the intersection the, of the aggregate market happens to the left of long-run aggregate supply. So ag market intersection... What am I calling it? Intersection or equilibrium? Uh, e let's call it equilibrium. Ag market equilibrium. Is left. Of long run aggregate supply. Here's the other possibility or the second possibility is let's say this is our short run aggregate supply curve and here's our aggregate demand curve. And in this case, look at the intersection point, right? In this case, our second circumstance, um, the aggregate market equilibrium is to the right of long run aggregate supply. So it's important to understand where this intersection occurs relative to long-run aggregate supply is important for understanding uh, the basics of the aggregate market. So this, the equilibrium here is to the left of the long-run aggregate supply curve. But here, the intersection, uh, the aggregate market equilibrium intersection is to the right of the long-run aggregate supply curve. And so that's two of the possibilities. And then, of course, the third possibility, I'm going to erase these now, the third possibility, put it over here. Here's our real GDP. And here is our price level. And I'm going to go ahead and draw in the uh, long run aggregate supply curve. That's our first curve, long run aggregate supply. Second curve, I'm going to draw in our short run aggregate supply curve. And then our third one, our third possibility is that the intersection occurs right at, right on top of, there's aggregate demand. And our intersection of the aggregate market occurs right on top of the long run aggregate supply curve, okay? And right here, aggregate market equilibrium is at long run aggregate supply. When that happens, when that happens, the economy is in long run equilibrium. And so I'm going to give you a definition now for long-run equilibrium. Long-run equilibrium is when the aggregate market equilibrium occurs at the long-run aggregate supply curve. And what that basically means is that aggregate demand, short-run aggregate supply and long run aggregate supply 
all intersect at one quantity. And when I say quantity, I mean real GDP. Remember that real GDP, this horizontal axis, remember that's representing quantity, right? It's a quantity of output. So aggregate demand, short-run aggregate supply, and long-run aggregate supply, they all intersect at one output quantity for the entire economy. This is an important point. So occurs at the long-run aggregate supply curve and short-run real GDP equals natural real GDP. And remember that natural real GDP is the amount of output that is possible to produce in the economy. So that's the same thing as long run real GDP. Remember also that natural real GDP is the amount of output that we produce in the economy when we achieve the natural rate of unemployment, which is full employment, okay? And also price level stability, okay? All right, so over here, you'll see in orange, this vertical line, long run aggregate supply is is natural real GDP, so I'm putting NR GDP. But notice also that that is the intersection of aggregate demand and short run aggregate supply. So it is also equal to real GDP, actual output in the economy. So actual output is equal to possible output in the economy. And that's what we're going to say here. We're going to say actual output in the economy is equal to possible output. So this is a circumstance in the economy where we are producing all of the output that we can possibly produce. We are, we are fulfilling our productive capacity. We are filling the milk gallon the one gallon milk jug, we are filling it to one gallon. We are using it to its long-term capacity. Now, I want to remember back, way back, several lessons ago, we talked about the idea of what percentage of our productive capacity are we using. And we called that capacity utilization. Capacity utilization. And what we said was when our actual output in the numerator is equal to our possible output in the denominator. When they're the same number, we get 100%. And therefore, this long-run equilibrium is a situation where we are at, the economy is at 100% capacity utilization. We are producing the right amount of stuff. This idea is long run equilibrium. And so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and understand the relationship between long run equilibrium and our three main macroeconomic goals.